In this lecture, we, are, uh, we will discuss food microbiology. Uh, so to understand how uh, microorganisms uh, affect the food or growing food, uh, spoil the food, we have to understand basically the intrinsic factors, the factors within the food, and the uh, extrinsic factors, factors outside the food. Intrinsic factors are the f uh, basically the environments within the food, like how much water is available with the food, the pH, nutrient biology, and biological barriers, and so forth. And the extrinsic factors are the factors, environmental factors. For example, the foods that have a lot of water will support the growth of microorganisms. The foods that have less water will not support growth of microorganisms. If you look at uh, uh, food that you have in your household, for instance, like meat has a lot of water. Uh, so meat is gonna go bad very quick. On the other hand, uh, if you look at the dry beans, nuts, uh, 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 or for instance, like red kidney, be kidney beans, uh, they could be saved for a number of months or even years. If you look at the rice that you purchase from supermarket, you could just keep it in your uh, house uh, uh, for a number of months uh, before using it. Why? Because they have less water. So less water means what? Less support for the growth of microorganisms. So water activity within the food is important for the growth of microorganisms. Any food that has water supports the microorganism growth. Any food that doesn't have uh, a wood activity or water does not support. So uh, anything that's dried will not support. So here, uh, most bacteria require a water activity of 0.9. A pure water has a water activity of point, uh, 1.0. Fungus, on the other hand, will grow at a, a water activity of lower than bacteria. That's why when you look at the uh, uh, bread, the bread uh, uh, it's gone bad with the mold and fungus because bread, cooked bread, has less wood activity. And that less wood activity does not support the growth of bacteria, so bacteria cannot grow in bread. And what could grow in bread? As fungus. So usually products with higher wood activity, bacteria, lower wood activity, bacteria cannot grow, but fungus could tolerate uh, lower water activity compared to bacteria. Uh, the other intrinsic factors are pH. So anything that has acidic pH or alkaline pH, bacteria cannot grow. Anything that's near neutral pH, bacteria could grow. So organisms uh, uh, um, that could tolerate lower pH, for instance, like fungus, that's why any food that you see acidic uh, in your refrigerator or outside the refrigerator will be spoiled by fungus. For example, if you look at the oranges, oranges have uh, uh, acidic pH. Bacteria cannot grow in that acidic pH. So what grows in that uh, uh, acidic pH? Fungus. So pH affects the growth of bacteria. Uh, the other ones that you're gonna see, nutrients. How rich the nutrients of the food is? If food has all the vitamins, all the amino acids, fats, means like it will grow, support the growth of microorganisms. For example, if you can take again, uh, uh, when you purchase meat from supermarket, and that meat at room temperature gonna go bad very quick. Why? Because the meat has protein, it has uh, fat, it has carbohydrates, it has the vitamins, it has minerals. So the bacteria will grow much quicker because the same exact way that we require from A to Z, for our growth, bacteria also requires from A to Z for the growth of microorganisms. On the other hand, if you look at the, say for instance, like if you take a cup of water and put a spoon of sugar in it and dissolve it, it doesn't go bad. Why? Because that spoon of sugar, sugary water, it doesn't have the proteins, doesn't have the uh, uh, fat, it just has the carbohydrate, it doesn't have the vitamins and minerals that's required for the growth of microorganisms. So microorganisms cannot uh, grow at that uh, sugary water, on the other hand. So the nutrient content is important. The rich, the nutrient content of the food is, 
the better I will support the growth of microorganisms. Biological barrier is basically the skin of the food. Uh, if you look at a tomato, um, a tomato with intact skin will not grow, uh, will not go bad as quick as a tomato uh, which has a damaged skin. So those are the biological barriers. So majority of food have some kind of cover or skin that prevents them from spoilage. Antimicrobial chemicals, uh, uh, for, in, for example, some food uh, will produce some antimicrobial uh, uh, enzymes like, like lysozyme, and the lysozyme will uh, attack and destroy bacteria. Uh, those are all intrinsic factors, so the factors that are found within the food. And other, uh, other uh, uh, factors like extrinsic factors also affect the growth of microorganisms. What are the extrinsic factors? The availability of oxygen. If there is no oxygen, the bacteria cannot grow. If the temperature is low, the bacteria cannot grow. So uh, that's why when we purchase food, we put it in the refrigerator because the refrigerator has around like four degrees of Celsius and the four degrees of Celsius do not, does not allow the bacteria to grow. But keep in mind that cold will not kill bacteria. So when you put the food in the freezer, the bacteria do not die, just the growth of bacteria will stop. When you put it in the refrigerator, the bacteria ag again do not die, but the growth is slowed down. So the lifespan of the food increases so you could keep the food for a longer period of time. However, you have to know that there are different types of bacteria. Mesophils are the bacteria that uh, live around like 25 degrees to 40 degrees uh, and the optimal temperature is roughly around 37 degrees. So those are the bacteria that live at the same temperature as our body temperature. Then you have the psychrophils who prefer lower temperature and then you have thermophils that grow at a higher temperature. Uh, for example, this one supports the low temperature uh, like food. If you look at the fish, when you get the fish, because the ocean temperature is lower, most likely you're going to find this type of bacteria. Now, if you take that fish and put it in the refrigerator, still this bacteria will grow because uh, it cannot uh, uh, stop the growth of microorganisms because they grow at lower temperature. So storage temperature is going to be what? Extrinsic factors that we kind of like uh, uh, try to uh, uh, stop the growth of microorganisms. So that's why when we purchase the food, we put it in the refrigerator. Uh, the other extrinsic factor is the amount of oxygen. That's why when, whenever you say uh, remove oxygen, uh, you uh, basically inhibit the growth of microorganisms. Microorganisms, in order for them to grow, they require oxygen. However, you have to keep in mind, unless if the bacteria is anaerobic bacteria, which could grow in the presence of, uh, uh, in the absence of oxygen, most bacteria, aerobic bacteria, cannot grow. Uh, that's why when you uh, buy the conserve cans, the cans that has food, they're basically, the oxygen from those cans have been removed and they have no oxygen. Uh, so, uh, but you have to know that there are different types of bacteria. You have anaerobic bacteria and you have facultative bacteria that live both in the presence of oxygen and absence of oxygen. There are aerotolerant bacteria that uh, could tolerate a little bit oxygen and micro aerophiles uh, which could also uh, grow at low temperature, uh, low oxygen. Uh, then the next thing that you should know about uh, uh, foods, uh, microorganisms that's used for food production. We make the microorganisms, we use them to produce yogurt, we use them to produce cheese, uh, uh, we use them to produce other beverages, food and so forth. 